It's time for our conversation this evening here on Checkpoint. To have with me in studio, as I mentioned earlier, Nzioka Waita. He's the president's chief of staff. He's also the head of the delivery unit, uh, PDU. Thank you for making time for Thank Checkpoint. Uh, perhaps let's start with that story by Akisa Wandera. I wonder what you make of the thoughts of the legislators speaking there. Uh, the first point to the vague nature of the kind of loans the government uh, gets Kenyans into the detail of the same in, in accordance with the PFM, the Public Finance Management mm -hmm. Law, to table number one budget statements, to indicate clearly sources of funds, to indicate clearly if there is any intended indebtedness what that indebtedness would look like and when loans are taken loans are not uh, personal affairs these are loans taken by the government of kenya and they go through the legal process including um, ensuring that all those loans are within the approved ceiling provided by the national assembly i think what you're trying to see what you're seeing here with some of the mps mm -hmm. number one is that they do need to spend more time familiarizing themselves with the documents tabled by the National Treasury, mm -hmm. and number two, to resist the urge to creep into the executive. It is the role of the executive to engage in developing the country, engaging development partners, and it is the role of parliament to audit that process after it is complete. So I think there needs to be clarity that the government cannot go unless it is operating outside of the fiscal framework approved yeah. by the National Assembly, it can work and complete its assignments um, in accordance with the budget statement that has been presented. Okay. So I think we really do need to see, uh, I, I think if, if I was seeing that from some of the more seasoned member of, members of parliament, I would be more concerned. But, you know, uh, my good friend Kosge should know better. And we'll talk a little bit more in terms of the detail that comes out after loans are taken and directed to several projects. Um, but to the second point in that report around a ceiling, yes. six trillion, um, it is fact that debt has tripled under President Uhuru Kenyatta's administration. <coughs> Does that worry you as it appears to worry others? Um, debt has tripled according to uh, the, report. the report that has been tabled. Yes. But roads have quadrupled, your port has expanded, you have a new railway, your economy is outstripping growth continentally and globally and growing at an average of uh, just over five and a half percent. This last uh, review we closed at 6.3 percent and I think we cannot escape the fact that the country's macro economic environment is stable uh, by all measures and these are not measures that are personal to the government. These are measures that are looked at by uh, multilateral agencies and other players within this space. I think it's important to note that the development that has been witnessed under this administration is unprecedented. In any corner of this country, wherever you go, you will find roads under construction, you will find bridges under construction, you will find schools and vocational training facilities, you will find hospitals, you will find all the, what we were calling the infrastructure deficit of close to 30 years of underinvestment mm -hmm. that have now come in under President Kenyatta. So I, I, I think we make no apologies um, for, so you do not for support being that aggressive. Cap. I do not support the cap. I think it is short-sighted. I think Parliament should perhaps focus on strengthening the public finance management legislation because it is true that throughout the public finance system, there are real questions that must be addressed. For example, value for money is a real concern for us in the procurement process, that when you buy a pen, this pen should not cost some astronomical amount, it should cost the market amount. But what we have in Kenya today, unfortunately, with our procurement system, is that we are more interested in following the process than looking at the substance of the outcome. And yeah. that is something that does threaten the use of public resources. We also need to look at what happens with funds as they get devolved. Because one of the biggest black holes today we have seen in development expenditure is when funds hit county treasuries. 
the level of scrutiny paid on the national government is so high, but this level of scrutiny does not transcend uh, to devolved units. Yeah. And this is an issue that we do need to look at. Before we go to break, you make the point that, yes, this uh, borrowing has gone to projects, uh, and I've talked about uh, the development in various sectors, but it's also a fact that perhaps if the corruption, as we've seen it in Kenya, was not seeing so many billions of shillings lost, would not need to borrow as much. If government would perhaps focus more on preventative measures, ensure we have a system of management of finances that's not leaking, then that would not be the story. That there are also promises made by this government that have not been kept. Those are also realities, aren't they? And I think we can debate them point by point. Um, what I would like to do, particularly around the corruption narrative, mm -hmm. is to separate the conjecture from the fact. I think why we are now in an environment where institutions have been capacitized, they have the ability to investigate and to prosecute, and every resource possible has been given to those institutions. I think we need to deal with the issues system systematically, so that when we talk about incidents of corruption, we are not making a big generalization. Mm -hmm. We are talking that this issue from this place, funds have been stolen, and so and so was accountable, and they are now have to face the law. Yeah. And and I think that's a much, it's a much healthier discourse mm. for the country to have than to wake up to screaming headlines that don't really talk about specifics. Uh, and that's what we are lacking. We like the excitement of talking about the numbers, but we, we are very lazy when it comes to drilling down to the specifics but and wanting to know. But isn't it a specific that 68%, for instance, of our revenue, as you've touched on counties, yes. um, remains with the national government? So where should greater scrutiny be? I mean, there is scrutiny, and we saw some of the members of parliament uh, recently you know, questioning uh, the county officials and as far as the budgets that they're bringing. Some of them are fabricated. But still, national government has the biggest chunk. I I think it's not one or the other. The, the role of scrutiny, I think, is not something that should be diluted. Correct. And I would be the last person to advocate uh, for the dilution of that scrutiny. I think right. what is important to note that it is only under this administration that the level of resources that have been afforded to tackle corruption and to deal with it at every level, mm. including giving uh, arms of government, like the judiciary, additional resources to expand their, their, their legal infrastructure mm -hmm. and court infrastructure to be able to dispense justice more efficiently. All right. You are watching Checkpoint here on KTN News. We want to take a quick break. When we return, we will start off on that uh, China trip by President Uhuru Kenyatta. A lot of speculation. Was the agenda to get more, another loan for the SGR? Was it not? That and much